Hi guys, it's Chelsea Jensen. I'm going to talk to you guys about progressive image loading today. Um, before I begin on progressive image loading, I just want to briefly review with you about image optimization. It's a first step to progressive image loading. So you always want to make sure that you optimize your images. You need to resize images, create multiple image sizes, use the source set, to allow your browser to choose which image it's going to load. Um, and then some of the tools that you can use include Adobe Photoshop, GIMP, Pixlr Express, and tinypng.com. I really like tinypng.com. Um, it's a nice website. You can just drop your PNG or JPEG files here. And what it does is it compresses the image size so you actually go from having this huge file size, 57 kilobytes, once it runs through their compression software, um, it's the same image. I can't see a difference between the two. I don't know if you guys can, but I can't see a difference. And it's more than 70% smaller. So it's a really great resource um, if you're worried about the size of your your load um, when your HTML is is loading up. Um, this is a really great way to reduce that with your images. And if you love Photoshop, they actually have a um, let's see what's it called <laughs> an add-on uh, plugin. There we go. They have a Photoshop plugin, so you can actually use tiny png within photoshop and scale and compress and preview all of your images right there in photoshop which is really cool so that's our quick review on image optimization now what is progressive image loading exactly well according to medium.com it's a technique to smartly load images by demand using small placeholders while that Im the original image is being lazy loaded um Basically, you're using a placeholder and giving your web page content more time to load the larger pictures without taking away from the user experience. Really quickly, I just want to show you an example between a non-progressive image load and a progressive image load. So here I have, I found a little um, animation that shows us um, the difference between the progressive and non-progressive image loading. Over here on the left hand side we have the non-progressive image loading. It loads top to bottom and we're left wondering for quite some time what that image actually is. Whereas on the right when you progressive image load um, it brings up a nice background and then slowly comes into focus. Now, with most connections, it's not going to take a full minute to load just one image. But on a slow connection, it could. Um, and the progressive image loading really helps with our user experience because you have an idea of what you're looking at before it's completely in focus. One of the main aspects of progressive image loading is the use of placeholders. And there are lots of different ways that we can use a placeholder. The most common, well, there's two that are the most common. One is very basic. It's just a solid background color. And um, Google actually uses this feature very well. Um, I will go ahead and a Google um, website here and I'm just going to search pumpkins really quick so we can see some images load of pumpkins. Okay now within the viewport you can see these images. As I scroll down you can see these nice solid backgrounds and then the images load and cover that background. Okay, that's a very basic use of a placeholder with progressive image loading. 
Another type of placeholder is what's called a low quality image placeholder. In this placeholder, what we do is we take our original image and we make the size much, much smaller. Um, and then we use that small image, we blur it with CSS and, um, and allow the original image to cover it when it's loaded. This solution works really well when you have a lot of images that need to be loaded. Um, and it works best when these images are in line, which I'll talk about a little bit more on the next slide. Here is a great um, animation that shows what this type of progressive image loading actually looks at, looks like in practice. Um, so we start out with this small image, it's nice and blurred, and then we slowly transition to, to our original nice quality picture. But to start off with, it's the smaller, lower quality image. Because we use the CSS blur effect, um, it doesn't matter that the quality is low. And it enhances our user experience um, because we can kind of have an idea of what this image is going to look at, look like once it's loaded. These last two types of placeholders I'm going to go over a little bit faster, um, and I'm not really going to go into depth about them, but I will show you an example. So there's an image SVG trace. Basically, um, you take your image, you transform it into a two-color SVG. That's what loads and is your placeholder until your original image loads. And there's also one that's called an image primitive, which is my personal favorite. It's really cool, um, but it can be a bit complicated. You actually use your code to form these primitive images. Um, and the image, it uses triangles or ellipses or rectangles. Basically, primitive forms, primitive shapes, um, but it gives a really good idea of what the image is going to look like. So here is an animation showing an SVG trace. And if you look at it in the very beginning, as your placeholder, like I said, it's just these two colors. It's just a silhouette of the image. And then we use the CSS to transition to this original image. Um, again, it, it provides a nice user experience and, um, and I, I really like that one. The primitive is my favorite. I'm sorry, I can't find that video. It's right here. I didn't think that was the video, I apologize. So here's the image primitive and you can actually see quite well on here um, all these different shapes. This one uses triangles until it transitions to the original image. But it gives this nice idea even more clearly than all of the other placeholders what this image is going to look like. And it's kind of an abstract, you know, it gives a nice little artistic aspect to it. So the user experience is a bit higher than, you know, just a plain background. Um, so those are some different ideas, some different types of placeholders that we can use. Like I said, I would mention inline image data. Um, basically, when an image is inline, it's you're embedding that image or there's actually a lot of objects that you can do this with but you're embedding it within your web page. Um, now it's kind of a give and take. It will accelerate the rendering of your placeholders, but it also increases the size of your HTML. So if you use this in practice, you need to be aware of that give and take relationship and make sure that you're doing what's best for your web page. I wanna talk about the different methods of creating a blur. Um, 
you can use CSS, the filter blur. Um, it's very simple and it's very effective when you add a JavaScript function along with it. Um, oftentimes, well, I'll show you this code pen here. So to start off with this um, image is low quality. You can see how well it's blurred and in the CSS, if you look, um, it literally is just filter blur and then how much you want that actually blurred. Um, and then if you look at our JavaScript over here, we have on load for the window. So as soon as this window is loaded, we're going to run these functions. Okay, we start off by, by loading these smaller images and showing them. Um, and then once that's loaded, then we begin to load these larger images and they will take pl the place of the placeholder. It, it basically sits on top of the placeholder. Um, in the CSS, our placeholder itself has a position of relative, and then the image that goes on top has a position of absolute. And that way we can, just like um, we put our our logo and our motto on top of um, our div on our our headers of our web pages. Um, this is doing a very similar thing, or you know the little weather summary box over our hero image. This is doing a very similar thing. And if you look over at the HTML, you actually have both images um, in the HTML. So. That's one method of creating a, a blur effect. You can also use just an HTML canvas tag. Um, this definitely requires JavaScript to help with the loading process. Um, and it's a little bit more complicated than I want to get into, but I will post a link so that you can look at it if you are interested in learning more about. Okay, and then I just wanted to show you a few of my sources. I am going to link um, a lot of these, or at least a few of these in my post so that you can go in depth a little bit more with this if you would like to. And hopefully this has made um, progressive image loading a little more understandable and a little more feasible. Thank you guys for listening and please let me know if you have any questions.